Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and I'm joined. I'm very excited about this episode today. I'm joined with my friends Hillis and Angie. How you guys doing? We're Hello, good. I'm good. It's Friday. Yeah. It's, well, can I say it's Friday? Because I don't know when it's going to air. It'll, it'll be airing on Friday. Yeah. So this will okay. come. This will be airing. <laughs> yeah. Usually I pre-record then like air the next day, but I'm going to be airing this on Friday. So, um, so yes, uh, I, I actually spent all day yesterday thinking it was Friday. So. <laughs> it felt like it. I was up in the mountains just driving around like I didn't have anything else to do. And then all of a sudden realized, wait, I have five flower arrangement orders like that I had to deliver to a person's house last night. And um, and I'm I'm just wandering around in the hills, like taking pictures of cows and chickens and old barns. <laughs> it's like Maria from The Sound of Music just twirling it's on the hills. <laughs> you know what I told my friend? I said, you know what? I just realized I have to do this when I get back home. And I don't, I said, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to believe that time's going to stop and wait for me to get back home to do all that. I didn't even have the flowers yet. It all so. works itself out. It all works <laughs> itself out. Well, you guys, before we get into it, I want to go ahead and just take a moment to remind you guys that both Hillis and Angie have their own channels, which I will be placing the links down in the description box below. This is Miss Angie T Tillman, the fickle chickle. She's got some great episodes. She's hysterical. I, I always feel like it's still Magnolia's meet spirituality. <laughs> you no, know, I just had an aha moment because I go, yeah, the email address. How can I forget that email address? So, of course, I know, man. Yes, Angie's the fickle chickle, y'all. She's got a great. We we've, we've uh, I'll put her website to fickles down um in the description box too. Angie has a great story she covered on my channel a long time ago about how she started her pickling business and she got really got got very popular in the South. And so Angie is definitely still Magnolia's meet spirituality. So um and that's what I love about her. She's she's awesome. And then we have Hillis. Make sure you go and subscribe to Hillis because I was the first time I had you on my channel, Hillis, I met you through ASEA. And so I had in my head that you were like this corporate business dude. And like, and then I, I realized that you're actually very spiritual. And we're going to talk about that even more after we answer some of your questions. We are going to get into um I'm glad we have Hillis here too. And of course, Angie and I have experience with off-worlders and all that kind of stuff, extraterrestrials, whatever, humanoids who are not of our dimension, whatever you want to call them. And we're going to talk more about the technology behind ASEA when it comes to the more um, psychedelic aspect of where this possibly comes from. But first, we are going to answer some of your questions before we get into the the uh, juicy side of this conversation. Again, a lot of the questions you guys had regarding the biology or the uh, science behind the biology behind the redox, I did cover with Catherine yesterday on our coffee chat. If you missed that, link is in the description box below because Catherine is a biologist herself. And so she was able to break down some of your questions regarding how the ASEA affects uh, menopause, how the ASEA is going to affect your period for women, all, all these other things regarding bio, just simple biology. And so those questions were answered yesterday. Again, that is in the description box below. But just some basic HR questions. I had somebody, first of all, Hillis, you can ex explain this. We, we get this question all the time and I've covered it a lot, but I'm going to cover it again. Is it safe for people to order ASEA products off of Amazon? You know, and the answer to that question is we don't know because you never know what you're going to get from Amazon. We don't know if it's a reseller. We don't know if someone's buying it and putting it up on Amazon. So we really don't know. There's no way to really control that or monitor that, at least from our perspective. Now, from corporate side, I don't know if corporate is monitoring that or what the compliance and what their guidelines are. So typically I always recommend to people purchase it from someone you know because at least you know what you get. And it's backed by money back guarantee. So yeah. with Amazon, you don't know. Yeah, and uh, Amazon can be used as like a marketplace, right? Like people, I could put products up on Amazon if I wanted to, I believe. So I think that's how a lot of people yeah. sell their books and stuff. So even Amazon itself might not even know exactly what's what's being sold. And so you're kind of gambling. It's like playing Russian roulette. You're kind of gambling whether you're actually going to get um, an actual bottle of the ASEA or it could just be a bottle with water in it that they're 
trying to sell you. So, so yeah. And again, as Hilla said, I want to, I want to specify, I re that's one thing I really like about ASEA is that they do give them 30 day money back guarantee if you're not happy with the product, but if it's not coming from them, there's, they can't give you money back because they didn't take your money. You know, you, you, you bought it from someone else. So it is better. It's safer. Of course, if you're ordering through someone, you know, you have the ability to speak to someone to, you know, text Jay or Hillis to, to you know, or me or, and you can talk to one of us about this. So yeah, just safer to order from someone, you know, okay. Another question, is this product available in Australia? Do we have a map somewhere that shows people where it's available? What countries? It's so, during the time of enrollment, you get a list of countries where it's available. You know, obviously, it's the United States, obviously, Canada, I believe, Mexico, uh, Philippines, New Zealand, uh, Australia, uh, Netherlands, uh, France, I believe, uh, parts of Asia. So there's, so there's a, a broad spectrum of countries where it is available. And I, I would almost guarantee that if you're from a country where it's not available, if you go to sign up for it, I'm sure someone's going to stop you and say, no, 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 don't you. you we're not. I know like in South Africa, it's not available because my friend Shanti is very interested in the product, but she can't get it in South Africa yet. So um, and I also want to remind you guys, too, and, and maybe Hillis, you can even speak more on this before we get. There are some products right now that are only available in the United States, correct? Doesn't mean yes. they're not going to be available elsewhere, but there are some products that are only available to us in the United States because this is an American-based company. So obviously, I, I would assume that's why they're picking the Americans to, to roll out new products with first because... It's an American-based company. Like the face mask, for example, is only available to Americans, correct? Yes, as well as I believe the cell performance collection line as well. No, cell performance. Yeah, and they might only be available here in the States as well. Don't quote me on that for sure, but I believe they're only here as well. Only because, you know, other countries have guidelines in which products have to those will be tested and so forth. And so those products may have not been tested for other countries yet be entered into that marketplace. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. They have to meet other countries' guidelines. Like we have the FDA. They have to meet other. I didn't even think about that. So, yeah. So I, I know that their goal is to have every product um, available to every person. But, of course, yeah, they do have to meet, go through the bureaucracy of the red tape. So, okay. Now, there's one question that actually my boyfriend had. And I didn't <laughs> think about this. So I thought I would ask it on air because I thought maybe other people – does this product need to be taken on an empty stomach? No. It is, there's no right or wrong way to take it. You know, according to Dr. Silverman, the onboard physician that works at the SEA, he recommends you can take it with or without food, at least, you know, give a five minute window. You know, people sometimes go to the extreme of like, okay, empty stomach half hour no you don't need to go through all of that it's that's why i like the product it's very simple mindless to use you know it's real simple straightforward and you just take it five minutes before five minutes after eating switch it around in your mouth for about 30 seconds and you're done that you know it's so funny and that's kind of what intuitively what i've been doing i'll take it and then and then like i'll wait like five minutes and that's it. And then I'll eat. And I and I honestly like it's it's working on me. I mean, it's been fine on me. I mean, my hair is growing. I feel like freaking Rapunzel. My hair is growing so fast right now. I'm gonna be Lady Godiva soon. Um, so you know, and um, and you guys, the swishing around in the mouth. We do cover that with Catherine. Catherine talks about why that is. And when she explained it, I was like, oh, of course, duh. It's because it's allowing. Um, I know they're great. Big it gets into the system more because it gets into the nervous system. It activates. I forget what it is exactly. I'm sure Catherine talked about it in more in depth, but it activates the the nervous system in the mouth, and it gets into the uh, begins the uh, digestive process because you have the saliva mixes in and gets in that way, and then it goes. You know, the whole biological process.
Yeah. So when she, question I had, yeah, I was wondering about the whole swishing thing. (laughs) I was under the impression that swishing it was like activating it, but no, Catherine was like, you can just swallow it and it will go straight into your colon though. And so if you want to allow it to get into your bloodstream better, then you need to swish it so it can be absorbed through your mouth, through your tongue, through your saliva, as Hillis was saying, to get into your blood system better. So your body can then send it if your colon's not where, I mean, if your colon needs redox, it will send it to your colon. But if there's other places in your body that need the redox, redox, um, then it will be able to, to send it. So it doesn't, you know, cause like if I know when you give it to your, your animals, you're not supposed to put it in a bowl with their food because it will, the AC will seek into the food. You know, you have to put it in a, a glass bowl separate and, and with animals, it will go directly into their colon cause you can't train a dog to swish it, but also dogs, animals drink differently. They use their tongue differently to scoop up the water or the ASEA. So it's, it is kind of a little swish that they're doing with their tongue that we don't do as humans. And so, okay, cool. Well, that, that makes sense. I, I think sometimes uh, we like to overthink these things. <laughs> and, um, and I will say, uh, so my boyfriend is, is I've talked, said this before, he was very skeptical of the claims that, that hair can grow back for men. He was very skeptical and Jay kept telling him, no man, like your hair grows back. And he, the other day I took a picture, he had little baby hair starting to grow back on his, on his forehead. And so he's a believer now he's lost mm-hmm. weight doing it because his appetite has, has, um, decreased. Has suppressed. Yeah. Um, it's definitely appetite and suppressant as well as it curbs appetite as well. I know that, you know, I think it was in month two or three where I noticed that for me, where, you know, certain cravings were started to go. And I'm like, oh, I'm not craving that anymore. And so it, it just helps it with, with that. And I have a theory behind why that is. Um, I know studying the Ayurvedic system and like the dosha system, sometimes people will overeat or have the um, propensity to want to snack. Well, a lot of times it's emotional issues, but sometimes it's because they're eating the wrong foods. And so the food yeah, they're getting- Your their body system, is looking for what it needs. So that's why we keep eating. And so when your body gets what it needs, there's no need for your body to keep eating. Exactly. So I think people who have maybe like a couple extra pounds and they maybe are not eating emotional eaters, it's because their their body isn't getting the nutrients it needs. But with the redox, it's going to help amplify your your nutrients as well. It's going to help the, the body break down the food to get the chemicals or not chem. I don't know what it, the compound of the, the apple or the banana or whatever it is to bring that that nutrient into your body where it's needed. So then and then obviously the elimination system, the colon starts to work better too, so that your body can eliminate what it doesn't need from the food or whatever it is you're eating faster, which, um, you know, if if you have, if you're constipated, um, that's really dangerous for your health because your body can't take in the the toxins it needs. And so it pushes it back into the bloodstream. And so, um, and that's something we talk about a lot. I always say that's why no one wants to ever hang out with yoga people because all we talk about is pooping in periods because that's like <laughs> the, the biggest it's just normal conversation in the yoga world you know like if right. somebody's constipated we don't let them practice because constipation could actually end up bruising the internal organs if they haven't if their colon is swollen we need to, to deal with that first in order for the body to be movable but the the redox i know i have digestion issues um and the redox definitely has helped me a lot with that as well um so so yes and i also want to cover one thing because i can feel like somebody's going to ask this before we get into into the fun topic. When you first take the ASEA, there's going to be a taste to it. Now, I didn't <laughs> taste anything. When I first did it, it just tasted like water to me, but that might be because I already am so strict about what I eat anyway that um, maybe I was already. My boyfriend, though, he tasted it. He said it tasted like pool water, but then over time, that taste goes away and it just tastes like water. And I know why that is. Hillis, do you want to explain to people why that is? Yeah. And just, you know, to put it in the beginning, if people don't like the taste, put it in the refrigerator. That will help to to lessen the, the taste a little bit. But it's because of the heavy metals, the different chemicals, the different uh, in your- things in the body. And so it helps to detox the body. And because we're so used to different tastes, you know, salt, sweet, sour, whatever. And most people sometimes either get a chlorinated taste or people get a metallic taste. 
that's because it's detoxing the body. So over, you know, a period of like two, two to three months, that test will let, lessen, the taste will lessen so that way you don't uh, have that aftertaste or that initial shock of when like, ooh, you know. Yeah. So that's why I say put it in the refrigerator. It's it, it's it's you. So basically, it's you, boo. It's not it's not the ASEA. It's it's the ASEA is basically highlighting for you where there's an imbalance in your micro is a microbiome. Is that the correct word? Yeah. Um, and so and that will so that's ASEA showing you like where you have where you're maybe a little bit out of the line. And, and that's the thing about human health. Catherine and I did talk about this. Sometimes we're so used to not feeling good that we don't realize we don't feel good. And yeah. so when a product like ASEA comes around and you go, oh. I really wasn't feeling, I was really running off of some, some crappy feelings and now it's gone. So, so just give it time, just be patient with yourself. And, um, that's the one thing I, the beauty, that's the most beautiful thing about this pro product that I personally love the most. And that's, this complements my 17 years and Ayurveda and yoga is that this product, it's not really the product it's, it's allowing your body to do what your body is designed to do. And that's the beautiful thing about this. It's supporting your body so your body can function the way that it was created to function, you know, and that's the signaling system that's helping the cellular uh, molecules of your body do what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what, you know, it's, it's not doing it for them. It's giving them that support. And so that's, that's one thing I love about this product. All right. Well, why is, you know, people on your channel, you're always talking about the friction thing and lighting the match. That's what I just thought of whenever you were talking about the taste and how it's <laughs> only showing you what you have wrong going on. You know, so anyway, I mean, the way I think, and I think that your, you know, your subscribers are used to you talking about that friction and lighting that match, and you've got to do that. So yeah, so I'm looking yeah. forward to it. <laughs> and it's exciting. Okay, we, sorry, go ahead. No, I just wanted to add one other thing to that because this is a question that I get a lot, and this is a perfect analogy that uh, Daniel Matthews talks about. You know, because people ask me, say, "Well, well, if I." take a CEO, will I need to take my vitamins or supplements or will I eventually get off medication and this and that? And so when it comes to supplements and vitamins, think of them as building materials for your body. You know, the vitamin A, the vitamin C, so on and so forth, whatever supplements you're taking. And think of the CEO, the redox molecules, the signaling molecules as the construction workers. So when you have when you put when you give the materials to the workers, they have something to build with, they have something to move throughout the body. And so it is in that regard to well yeah, keep taking what you're taking, but at some point you may not need as much of the supplements, not as much of the vitamins that you are taking presently because everything is working so efficiently. And when it comes to the medication, you know, a lot of people that I have talked to, they have you know, we're on medication for blood pressure, medication for this. You know, within a span of like six months or more that they got off of the medication, like they didn't need any of that stuff anymore because they are getting the support that they need because of the ASEA and then the choice to uh, improve their eating habits and lifestyle. So that in itself also is a contributing factor, not just the ASEA alone, but also the choice to live better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I it's the quality of your life improves greatly as well. And um, as you're saying that too, that's why and Catherine kind of alluded to this yesterday, but that is why people experience kind of an anti aging look about them as well, not even with the skincare because you know, I, the, the healthier, you can tell a lot about the state of someone's health by the way that they look. Right. You can tell a lot about their uh, the bags under eyes, the eyes, the hair, the nails. You can tell a lot about the overall. Remember, your skin is your biggest organ of your body. Mm -hmm. And so you can tell a lot um, about the state of someone's health just by their physical appearance. And, you know, children, when we're when we're babies, we have all the redox. We're that's why kids are like resilient and why they can like. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, we had a kid, a, a boy I grew up with, decided he wanted to bungee jump off of his tree using a dog leash, and it didn't work. And he literally jumped off the tree. 
and broke his arm and the next day he was back at school. You know, like, like if that happened to us, I mean, at 40, it would, it would be a week in the bed. Right. Like, you know, so like, it's, and that might've just been growing up in the eighties and nineties. Cause in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. I jumped off the back of a truck on a dirt road. Um, just like was sitting on the tailgate and just went, my, my cousins were in the back of the truck and they all had, we all had these ice creams, cream cones and mine fell. And I really wanted you know, one of one. And my cousin was like, if you jump off the back of the truck, but seriously, this is a true story. I think I was like eight or nine. And I just like, I thought that I was just going to like slip right off and stand up, you know? <laughs> oh no. That's I mean, hit the back of my head, my back rolled. I don't know what all happened, you know, but I was fine wow. the next day. Yeah, your parents are probably like, just rub some dirt. I mean, I'm, I'm, how many parents told them just rub some dirt on it? You're good. Get out. Are you dying? No, go to school. You know, like, you know so um. that's, that's that's the kid that that's those are kids. If you were born in the 70s, you grew up in the 80s and 90s. It was it was a lot of tough love. I'm like, look, we're on our own out here. <laughs> I, I will say there was there's I follow a lot of these funny shorts of of people around in our age. People grew up 70s, 80s, 90s. And a Gen Z, I guess, who's like the new generation that are in the early 20s now is asking why kids drink from ho like the hose outside and didn't go inside and drink water. And this guy was so funny. He he put on this accent. He was like, let me tell you about a far off time in our world in a magical land called the outside, where children were banished every day to the magical land of outside and were not allowed back into the realms of inside until this the magical street land appeared to guide them back into the land of inside. And so we would have to find the sweet nectar of the hose in order to feed ourselves the sweet nectar of the hose in the mystical land of outside because we were not loud into the labyrinth of inside. <laughs> yeah, I remember commercials back in the, I guess, 70s, early 80s, yeah, they had 73. Like well, yeah, and they had like the a water fountain you could you could hook to your, your water spigot outside. Yeah, yeah. I wanted one of those so bad. I was like, if we just had one of those, that'd be so cool. Cause we always had a drink from the hose outside. Like if we just had one of those fancy, like, you know, like that would be fun. You know, I was looking forward to something like that. Now kids are like, yeah, oh, they you, need a Yeti cup and a, you know, what? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and you're lucky if you had some loose change in your pocket. Cause if you did, you will go to the penny candy store and get you some penny candy. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I mean, that was life. You know? <laughs> I mean, heck. Yeah, I used life. to get paid. Um, my parents, it was it was not allowance, really, but it was like um, if I caught somebody that left their light on, they walked out of the room and left their light on. They had to give me a, a, a nickel or a dime. Like we, we did this game. And so then I would save up like I caught you. No, no, no. You left your light on. That's For a nickel. <laughs> You're wasting energy. You left the door open. The air conditioner's on. You owe me a dime. You know. Like <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you know, it's so funny before I will say this before we get into it. For those of us watching that grew up in the 70s, 80s and 90s. Do you guys know this? Speaking of off world or stuff, do you know the show Stranger Things on Netflix? It's filmed here in Atlanta. Well, I was watching, of course we watched it because we wanted to see, I know where everything is shot. Like, I'm like, oh, that's done now. I know that, whatever. But I was watching an interview because it takes place in the 80s and uh, with the kids, the main character, the kids, and the kids were so confused because obviously these are kids in today's world, were so confused as to why the parents didn't know what they were up to. And the producer <laughs> <started> to <speak> <laughs> <laughs> and explain to them that in the, that in the 80s and 90s, your parents never knew what you were up to. No. Their lives. You had, you just got on your, you would just, and when you want to know where your friends were, you got on your bike and you went around and we, the house that had all the bikes in the front yard. Yep. That's where, that's the house. That's where that you just went and knocked on the door and there were your friends. You yeah, know? exactly. I mean, and actually, I think my house might have been that house. If not, it was my best friend's house, which was next door. So it was like between, because it was all of us on the street. So we didn't go far or too far. I think the, the most dangerous thing that I've ever done, we would put, and, and I had the biggest backyard on the block. So that's another reason why people was always at my house. Because you were and in the so, mystical land of the outside. <laughs> you were not exactly, the, exactly. In the realm of the inside. You were stuck in the mystical land of outside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we, one day we were playing, uh, stick ball or or whatever and someone hit my ball over the alley into the next uh 
built uh, businesses uh, parking lot, and it was uh, a wholesale candy store. So I'm like, I'm going to go get my ball. I don't care. So, but there's a dog over there. It's like, I don't care. I want my ball. So my I'm like nine years old at the time. I'm like probably 60 pounds soaking wet. So I'm sliding under the fence to get my ball. Next thing I know, I hear this, oh, 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 this big old giant dog running after me because I went into the the lot of the whole of the wholesale candy place. And next thing I know, I'm I'm out from there, I'm back in my yard, and I see my mom looking at me from the back porch. I'm like, giving me that side eye. Oh God, you it's knew. It's like, are you, you okay? Knew. What were you thinking? I'm like, it was my ball. No one else is gonna go and get it. It's like next time, leave it. I'm like, no. So it's just like you know these things that happen outside. Yeah. That when they happen, they just happen, and it's just. In, in the realm of you just being a kid, having fun and taking responsibility for your own life. <laughs> right. You're taking, and that's what that's, I, I saw um, another meme or somebody who said, you know, I grew up as a teenager drinking Everclear out of a bathtub and running from cops. Your generation drinks White Claw needs a safe space. We are not the same. You right. know? And <laughs> no, because you know, it's so funny because even when I was five, five years old every year there was a big christmas party at the house what and my aunt used to make her famous rum balls 151 mind you i didn't know what this was until i was like a teenager so i mind you and i'm supposed to be in bed five years old adult party i'm just walking around the party I'm like oh sweet you know i picked one up and i ate it and i'm like this doesn't taste right but i ate it anyway because i didn't want to throw it away and I didn't feel so good. So I don't and I don't remember the rest of what happened. So as I got older, I'm like, I don't like rum. And then I had that flashback, I'm like, oh wait, I was five years old. I had a rum ball. <laughs> yep. Do you so remember experiences, how, you know? That's what makes you that's what makes people that's what people because I am technically what they call a zenial because I the the I'm the only if you were born between nineteen eighty and nineteen eighty four, you we are of our own generation. We're the only sub generation. Um, isn't that interesting? Because this this bracket of generation, as they say, we're too feral to be millennials. If you're born between 1980 and 1984, you have a lot of the personality traits of Generation X. Like we were feral, we were kicked outside, we had to, we didn't have, you know, we we didn't have cell phones until I didn't get my first cell phone until you know, we didn't have the internet. We had we had to use a Dewey Decimal system. Like we, you know, we weren't we were like right on the crest of millennials, and we were literally 1980 to 1984. We got the hard knocks the latchkey kids of the Generation X, but we're technically not Generation X because we were born after 1980. So we, we are, we're we in our Zennial. We're called the Zennials. Um, oh you just That's made me hilarious. remember when you said latchkey. I, I remember like our school, our public school in South Georgia, they had somebody come speak about child abuse. Oh, because we were all left on our own. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and they and they gave us out these like, I don't, all I remember was a sticker. And, <laughs> And I stuck it to the kitchen a phone that was on the wall. I stuck that child abuse hotline. <laughs> and your parents were like, just try to call this Just to show my parents, I was like, you know, I've got the number. <laughs> you keep kicking me outside. You know, well, see, I, was land outside. <laughs> I grew up with my grandmother in the house. So my grandmother, I think she retired by the time I turned like eight. But she was always home. But still, that didn't mean we got we didn't be kicked outside. I mean, we oh, still yeah. had to let ourselves in the house. We had our own keys and everything. But she was home most of the time. But we were yeah. still treated like last week. <laughs> yeah. No, and I think that's so, why. Like someone said, that's why Generation X is the most resilient generation because. because yeah, I think I was nine years old when I took the bus. In Chicago for the first time, and mind you, if this was not no, and I kid you not, this was not your typical bus ride for me to get to school. I had to walk to the train station, which was about maybe two and a half, three blocks, and then I get on the train and take the train maybe about. 
four or five stops. And then after I get off the train, then I take, gotta take a bus. Oh, I don't know, about 15 minutes to get to school because it was like a small private school. Yep. So yeah, that I was doing that at nine years old. Yeah, and I, I think, I mean, I remember, do you, Angie, there's a private school down here in down, is it Woodruff? There's a school down downtown Atlanta. And if you're up at, in the, on the MARTA station, which is our subway system, like if you're going to the airport early in the morning to catch a flight, that's the only time I really take MARTA. You, you used to see it's like it's nine, it's 10, 11 year old kids in their uniforms riding on MARTA on a public subway system to their mm -hmm. school and their parents, you know, I have... I know parents are real protective now, but I actually have a lot of respect for our parents. And I guess because the world, there wasn't as much, there wasn't internet. There wasn't, they had, there, the oh. news wasn't 24 seven. It was just the evening news. You know, what was that from the eighties? It, it's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your yeah, kids are? You know are? where your kids are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they couldn't track us. We didn't have cell phones. There was no way to track mm -hmm. us, but you knew like we feared our parents. Like if we weren't home by the time the street light lamps came yeah. on, we were going to get spankings. Like we were going to get whooped. Mm -hmm. So you speared your parents. So you were home in time. And um, everybody knew each other's parents because you didn't have yep. to. You go knock on the door. The teachers. Hi. Yep. Yeah. Hi, Mrs. Smith. Is Johnny home? Can I, can I, she's like, come in, come in, come, come you know, so yeah. you knew each other's parents, you know. One time my school bus broke down. I lived out, out in the country and it, it broke down like in some, in another neighborhood, not mine where, you know, anyway, it broke down. It was a substitute bus driver that day. And she just said, do y'all know your way home? And we all, <laughs> it was the best day ever. That was priceless. Do you know we all just home? found our way home. We went across fields. I'm talking like this is South Georgia, like peanut farms. I mean, it's just, At, it'd be like, yeah, yeah it'd be like no a GPS. neighborhood here and there. Kind of. Yes. No, 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 no. I wondered a day I had to learn how to read a map as a kid. I wondered a day if kids could ever read a map because they're so used to it. Well, I will say before we get in, can I, we're going to talk about this. Yeah. There was a funny <laughs> thing I saw the other day. I'm going yeah, to think. This is what it's all about, though, is maybe this is getting, you know, this yeah, will help like <laughs> bring us back to like, bring us back to our youth. Say, for the zennials, for my zennials out there like me who were born between 1980 and 1984, it is said that we were the last of the greatest generations ever born because we were the last generation. If you were born between 1980 and 1984, you are the very last generation to be a latchkey kid, to have a parent say, rub some dirt on it. Yeah, I have a parent say, you know, if you don't shut the door, were you born in a barn? You know, I mean, if I didn't say yes, ma'am, and no, sir, to my parents, I got smacked upside the head. You know, child abuse was legal when we were kids. It made us stronger. Well, just for the viewers, <laughs> I was not born during that time. I'm 1973. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying, if you were my, like, my sister's 86, and she had a lot of the internet stuff coming into her. I didn't, we didn't have that when I, and again, we had to learn the Dewey Decimal System. I, st I still know how to rock a card catalog. You know, we we were the last of the greatest generation. We didn't have cell phones. No one was recording. We well, were the last generation to do sh stupid shit when we were young, and no one recorded it. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. So I, I, there was a funny. I will say there's a funny Indian lady who talks about well, the Generation Z asked her, "What was it like going to a club without a cell phone?" And she was like, "It was marvelous. We yes. were concerned about taking selfies." We could just, we didn't know if our bra was hanging out. We could just live in the moment and have fun. It was amazing. There was no evidence to put on social media when we called in sick the next day as to why we were actually sick. You know, so we were, born, and I will, okay, so the last meme I thought I thought was hysterical, and I don't have kids, so I didn't share it because I don't have kids. Somebody's a mom said, I really want to ship my kids back to 1985 and see if they would survive. Yeah. Oh, yes. My 16 year old. My 16 year old. Yep. She's, back the to one. She's, the, she's the last child. Yep. Yeah, she they would survive. And I will, before, one more thing. I, if you watch <laughs> these Stranger Things show, you see the teenagers in the 80s talking on a phone, like the landlines yeah. that we had. And um, they had to teach the actress and actor how to actually hold the phone, how to deal with the cord. 
you know how we would play with the cords or like you could wrap yourself up in the cord and then uh, like so you see you're kind of doing that like how to how to work because they didn't know how to even like how to even use it and they had to show her how to like interact with the telephone like this is a telephone mm -hmm. um you know it's 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 hysterical and, and not that i don't feel like that much time has passed i will say somebody said you know, no, I, I that on, on Twitter, I think it was a Twitter video. I don't know. I'm not on Twitter anymore. It was a TikTok where the guy was like, that was shared on Twitter. That was like, I heard the generational Z's talking about how they need to create a phone that you put in a house that everyone can use. And he was like, <laughs> we've circled back to the landline. <laughs> so generation Z thinks they've created this amazing. No, boo. That's called a landline. We all grew up with one. Um, our, our generation Z is doing a challenge to write your name without lifting your pencil off the paper. Honey, that's called cursive. We all learned it. You didn't, but we did. We learned how to write and read in cursive. But anyway. That was a good grade. Yes, we had to do the worksheets and write over and over and over again with cursive. You know, and it was cursive is great because if you're not quite sure how to spell something, you can just kind of like wiggle through the cursive. Yeah. <laughs> And you come back to LA and say, what is that supposed to be again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, my cursive was off. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. So I will say, if you guys have any funny stories, and we weren't <laughs> going to talk about this today, but reminiscing over the good times of our youth that we're coming back to with this, yeah. If you have any funny stories from the 80s and 90s, feel free. I will say another funny story. I saw it on the internet, the great world of the internet, the mystical land of the interwebs. A kid found a cassette tape that had obviously been outside for a very long time. It was a Van Halen <laughs> cassette tape and he came to his mother and said mom i think i found a civil war relic civil war relic. it was a cassette mom i think i found a civil war relic. <sighs> van halen it was van halen van halen jump. Save. Jump. might as well jump, jump. <laughs> yes, yes. So anyway, all right, you guys. So we will talk about something I'm very, the, the technology behind the ASEA. Now, I'm a weirdo. The three of us on this channel right now are, I think we're proud weirdos um, in the spiritual realm, all three of us. Um, so I love the idea that this is potentially, I, I hate saying alien technology because I think the word alien means a foreigner or a stranger. And honestly, we're not our the aliens are not alien to us really because we we carry the galactic DNA. So there are there are cousins, there are cousins. Um, I I prefer using off world or extraterrestrial. That this is coming. This is technology. Now I will say, if you guys on Tuesdays, I'm going through the channeling of the Octarian anthology by Tom Kenyon in the very first episode. He spoke about, now Tom Kenyon, if you guys are not aware of him, he is a very sciencey intellectual guy. That's one thing I really like about him because he's talking about woo-woo stuff and he's like, I know this sounds crazy because I'm a scientist, but this will happen to me. But he talks about being um, taken into a spaceship with the Octarians and he's given a liquid from a blue bottle that helps hold his vibration up in order for him to stay on the ship. We also see references in, and I know, Hellas, we've talked about Thoth and the Emerald Tablets, but as you guys know, I'm going through the Emerald Tablets on my channel. We see references, Thoth references, multiple times in multiple tablets that there is technology available to us. Some of it is hidden on this planet. And as he says, I'll read the very, very first verse of the very first tablet because it's my favorite. He says, I thought the Atlante Atlantean, master of mysteries, keeper of records, mighty king, magician, living from generation to generation of being about to pass into the halls of Amente, set down for the guidance of those who are to come after the great records of the mighty wisdom of Atlantis. Those who are to come after, that's us. So, and he talks constantly throughout this that when the Emerald Tablets come back into surface, it's for us now, for us to know. And slowly, these technologies would slowly start to be released to us from the mighty Atlantis, which we know Atlantis was a com combination of a bunch of different galactic beings. And um, I think sometimes... We think when we think of technology, we think of like a med bed. We think of something like a machinery, which, yes, there are machinery. I don't think we often realize that it could come in, in something as simple as a supplement. That right, is well, well, no, I was going to say, because with that, you think of technology. Nature is mm -hmm. technology. It's, yeah. in, in, in some circles or most circles, it's called bio or bio. 
it's in that frame of mind that we have to allow ourselves to sit in. Mm-hmm. But it's the, you know, first technology, because when you have, you know, the web of nature, it starts with the mycelium, the, uh, the technology and energy of transformation through the mushrooms and how yeah. that technology is branched out and formed and transformed into many different things. So, yes, this is technology that can be multi-purpose and multi used or versed in different ways and different streams to assist us in holding our frequency and creating new ones. Yeah, that I, I absolutely, that's why I think, you know, that's why I think when uh, the, the owner of this company, and I'll, I'll put the, the, or the founder, I'll put the Genesis video down in the description box, guys. I'll also put a link to a CSU YouTube page as well. It's almost like, because the guy, from what I understand, the founder or the person who created the formula, he wasn't necessarily like a scientist. He just all of a sudden decided to sit down and figure this out. And it's almost like, and I don't want to put words in his mouth or create an experience he didn't have. But as, as a viewer watching it, I was like, oh, my God, he channeled this. Yeah. That was my perception that is that he channeled he was a business guy like he channeled this formula and the fact that if you watch the founding video they were working with this redox for a long time to try to figure out how to it's like they knew that the redox was kind of the key to restoring health and and human nature and human potential but they couldn't figure out how to stabilize it long enough to but outside of the body Right. And he was saying he had to have this big contraption in his house to do it. And he would have like, what, like five minutes to drink it once or it would dissolve. And so, and even in the video, he talks about how when he finally figures it out and gets it to stabilize, that they're like, yeah, right. No, you didn't. Yeah, right. And he had to like bring it in and show them. And they're like, holy shit, you figured out how to stabilize this outside of the body. And it just re- it goes back to that what Thoth has been saying, that all of this stuff has been available, but they have kept it hidden the mighty priests of Atlantis have kept it hidden so it didn't get into the hands of the bad guys. So it didn't get into the hands of the dark souls that would only be in the hands of those who would use it for good, which we know that the the founder was offered like generational wealth to sell this to the, I won't say the the pH word, but the big companies with these um, so they could shelf it. And that took a lot of integrity for, and that was really what got me when he did, because I don't know if I would be that, you know, to turn down money like that, like, you know, but he, he said, decided he wanted to, to go out to mankind um, because that's, that's the benefit. And I know that they had, they started, Hill is correct, experimenting with like athletes, correct? To see how they were. Yeah, going. they did. They did. And what I like about it, because no, with anything that comes across my vision, I always have to do my research like you. And so one of the things that stood out to me and the, creation or the manifestation or the coming back of this technology is the fact that they created it to assist the immune system, the glutathione in the body. And that's where it initially came from, for that thought process. Because our health in this form ends and begins in the immune system. You know, that's where everything is. And without that, you know, it's going to be determined whether we live a short life, a medium life, a long life, or, my, or in my desire, extra long life. Because the body, when taken care of and properly, is meant to last, you know, a couple of hundreds of years. Not meant for the short lifespan. And I just want to put things into perspective here in terms of mortality. You know, you have this amazing technology that is here to assist to help us uh, with longevity. And so when we are born, we go through the phases and cycles and processes of life. And so by the time we're 25, we have our fully developed brain, have can make better decisions, life choices, et cetera, et cetera. And so by the time you get to like 50, you have this wealth of knowledge and wisdom and it's like, oh crap, I have like maybe 20, 30, maybe 40 years at the most to impart this wisdom and on people. But then in that process, it took you maybe about 30 years to learn all of this. And then you're going to spend the rest of your time imparting this wisdom on other people. But at the same time, imagine 
you know, when you have, you know, wizards and masters and teachers and things of that nature, you know, as we talked about in the Emerald Tablets, how they, I don't want to say cheat at death, but prolong their lives by using yeah. technology, using the energy that surrounds them and pulling in other dimensions. And so this product is more in a 3D way. And when I speak of 3D way, it's something tangible that's for us to hold on to. And yet it works in a 5D way, if that makes sense. So we have something tangible, but yet it's, it's in the dimensional space that we can really have. And so in the terms of mortality, now we've, you know, reached 50, 60, 70, and now we begin to, okay, have this wisdom, begin to enjoy our life, and now be the true teacher or master you know, for other people. And so it's in that realm in which the product can begin to assist us and even teach us new ways to, you know, raise not just our consciousness, but also in raise the uh, education about our own health. Yeah. And that, again, that's what I know as, as someone who spent years in India studying with the masters there, you know, from very, from the very beginning that your body is smarter than your brain. And that's very, <laughs> yeah. there is a wisdom that, in, and you see this in the Sophia code as well. I mean, Hathor and her key code, Hathor speaks about the Sophia code. She speaks about the, the molecules. She gets into the science of DNA and lots of big sciencey words and like how, you know, there is within the the helix of your DNA, there's also a spiritual DNA that runs around it as well. And yeah. it takes time to activate that. So I love what you're saying, Hillis, because, you know, we come to this earth and the last episode we did, which I'll put down in the description box below, guys, if you missed it with Hillis, you talked about this isn't a great awakening. It's a great remembrance. And so we, we come th into this world um through the, the the veils of amnesia we're born into these bodies we we carry the karma of our family of you know we, we've designed this our souls designed this and then we go through the friction of of suffering and being going through all these these experiences of illusion that we we perceive and they talk about this in the in, in Acturians as well that we've been taught to to think that there are certain limitations and because we believe these limitations they become true and yeah. um, and you're right. So by the time we get to our middle age, that's when we have accumulated all this wisdom that we can then start to have not just a part, and not just to give to other people our help, but to also live a more quality based life for ourselves. And unfortunately, the way that the controllers, because we are in a polarized planet between they've done things to, you know, we've got, then we have that Alzheimer's coming in where you start to lose memory. You know, the body starts to go the opposite direction. And, and that is part of the nature. That is what's supposed to happen. But you're right, Hillis. I mean, you look at all of the spiritual texts, not just like the Bible, but I mean, people were living in like 900, a thousand years. This is common across all sorts of spiritual texts. Um, the Acturians talk about this, that human life is, we have shortened it. It's not supposed to be 80 years we're supposed to be here for for a few hundred years really and um and it's just it's but we perceive and a lot of times we perceive these limitations but i will say something that i noticed when i first started taking the first thing i noticed was i chilled out a lot i my, my anxiety kind of went chilled out and i have done i'm a huge fan of microdosing. everybody knows i love my microdosing. i think plant-based medicine is amazing um if you guys get a chance to do it i just you know microdosing is different because you're taking a small amount so you can still if you do the whole dose you got to go be by yourself but if you just do the micro <laughs> you, you'll go you'll go see god like you 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 might not want to be standing in the middle of the grocery store when that happens but um but uh if you're microdosing, it you can still you know live your normal day because it's not it's not a is powerful enough to it's just slowly working back some of the the cloudiness of, of mind but um but the sia it's i'm glad you because it, it is a kind of it is a lot like it in a lot of ways there are similarities between the asia and things like microdosing from my yeah. own perception of experience as you because I, I do feel calmer and 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 it does there is something to be said that when you when you go through the aging process and you're dealing with all these toxins i know angie you've struggled with immune deficiency disorders mm -hmm. um and you start to feel bad you don't feel good your perception of reality then shifts to that sensation and that experience and so then these limitations 
that could could potentially only be temporary become more um, permanent as okay. what the actuarians were saying. And that does, because when you take a CA, you do start to, I mean, there was one day I, the day before I had a little bit of a cough. And so I upped my dose to a CA to 12 ounces and not eight. Jay had suggested that it was a Sunday that Monday. I felt like an eight year old. I had so much energy. I was like bouncing off the walls. Like my my nephew is 10. There was one day I walked in and he was like hanging off the banister. I don't know where my sister was. Like, you know, he climbed up. I felt like doing that, like climbing up the railing and just seeing if I could hang off a banister, you know, cause I had so much energy. Yeah. I had done the, tw- and it was unbelievable. I was giddy. I felt like a kid again. And so- That's amazing. And so that's just showing you that even though my body is 40 years old, I've broken numerous bones, I've been really sick, I have arthritis, all these things, that even at 40, I was able, unintentionally, I just took 12 ounces to get rid of the cough, unintentionally, I the next day, I got so much work done that day, it was unbelievable. And I felt great. I felt great. Um, and it just shows you that your body isn't doomed to yeah. the the mind control that they've given us through the Rockefellers and their version of, of, um, of science, right? There's a whole other option over here. And you know, what's interesting too about that, you know, because when people, you know, take a CIA, they're so focused on the physical outcome, you know, well, what, well, well, will this happen? Will that happen? Will that be taken out? Will that be eliminated? So forth and so on. And so, you know, me being already spiritual that I am and doing, you know, you know, seeing clients every week and doing what I do and, you know, psychic and all this other stuff. And about maybe two, three months in of me taking it, there was a slight difference in how I connected to spirit through my process of connecting. It was much more efficient it was streamlined. Everything was much more open. Um, not saying that it wasn't before, but there was a certain piece of clarity that came in that wasn't there before. And so what I feel this happening is going to happen for everybody who takes this. Once they get the physical aspect all straightened out and cleaned up and cleared out, is when the energetic piece, the mental piece is going to start as well. I love that. It's, you know, in, in the traditional yoga system in India, the first series of Ashtanga yoga is called Yoga Chikitsa. And that means physical therapy because they have to get the body, the body to feel better before you can even focus on, on the inner, sometimes the inner world. And, um, yeah, I love that Hillis because it's it's somebody asked me on the show a couple weeks ago how I felt about profits. And I basically said, "Well, you're a prophet. We're all we all have these connections. Yeah. What do you think?" You know, mm-hmm. and so to give people that power back that they are conduits themselves. Mm-hmm. Um and isn't that beautiful too cuz the body, you know, the body is the shakti of the soul. It's the expression of the soul. And so once the expiration for this body is done, that's when you take a new body, a new expression. And the body is not trying to fight you. The body I mean, Marnie Alton, who's my favorite bar teacher in the whole world, she's amazing. Her classes are very spiritual, and she makes me cry a lot with things she says. And there was one day she said, even the times when you were abusing your body and mad at your body and being nasty to your body, your body still showed up for you. Made me emotional when she said that, because how many times have we, especially women, starved ourselves, put stiletto shoes on, you know, how many women have gone and made themselves throw up you know, and, and that hit me hard that the body still showed up for you. You know, mm. yeah. it's, it's, wow. beautiful. yeah. And, and when you, and I, and I think the more you take the ASEA, your the body is not, is there to like help you have this experience being as Alan Watts says, the point of being alive, what's the point of life? It's to be alive. And the vehicle of the body is what helps you experience what gives you your emotional, your energetic emotional center when you're and thoth actually talks about this and the uh the seventh tablet when he gets into the seven lords and the chakra system he talks about the cycle of life and death and that when the soul is just the soul without the body it's just the shiva without the shakti there is no real experience of life because there's no understanding of death 
And so when we're able to come in and have the quality return to us in this existence, only then can we really love deeper, be present for our lives, forgive easier, have, be able to sit back and understand why certain things happen because there's a greater experience and that is being played out through your body in this moment. Um, and I know Angie, you've struggled heavily with autoimmune issues. Yes. And so I'm excited to see what happens to you. Do you have <laughs> I, I keep picturing myself in, in the recliner that I lived in, in 2019, you know, for almost a year, you know, and, uh, I, so while you're talking, talking about all this, I, I'm, I'm picturing all that, like, gosh, I really just could barely even, you know, wash my own body and get myself up. And I would cook because I love to cook so I could hold on to the kitchen counter and, and cook meals for my family. It just made, that was the one thing that I looked forward to every day. You know, my husband and kids would be like, you know, you don't have to. I'm like, no, 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 I need <laughs> to do this, you know, yeah. for myself. Um, but yeah, during that time, I do remember, um, I, it, it's like what had to happen because I was, you know, my body, I mean, it was like full blast every day, like that business, my store, you know, just run, 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 say yes to everything. And then all of a sudden I was like, I, I can't, I can't show up anymore, I'm just going to go and uh, go. I mean, and, and I went inward, you know, just went inward. I, I was forced to. Yeah. So my body broke down and I couldn't, my body was like, uh, I've been here for you. <laughs> but, but think about this, Angie, because you experienced that. That's the whole, what Thoth was saying. You kind of know death. And so now when you're, when you start taking the SIA, you're going to be able to understand and have a greater wisdom because you have that that dichotomy of where you were before and yeah. that remembrance of where you were before. And I do have an episode, I'll tell you guys, I do have an episode dropping up Wednesday this upcoming week where I talk more about Prakriti and Purusha and um, our Shiva Shakti soul body. And, you know, the body is, is, the, is the expression. It's how you live. You know, it's, it's when we get, you know, it's when we get too attached to identity that we can't see beyond the identity of where we are now when we start to understand that this is just an experience and there will be more experiences but that is so that's coming up wednesday guys but that is it, it is it is such a, a tang it's a tango your soul and your body are doing a dance together you know it's the y the yin and the yang it's the um the masculine and the feminine the the masculine is the shiva the feminine is the shakti it's that it's that 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 balance of nature and soul and spirit in in this perception of time and yeah it's um besides the spirituality for you hillis like what was one of the first big things you noticed with asia when you first started taking it like what well, was I mean, your big aha the the big aha was the most apparent thing which was more energy physical energy you know because doing everything that i was doing you know being Busy, you know, seeing clients, you know, assisting with the business and doing this, doing that. It's like, you know, like everybody, you know, everybody, you know, just on the go. And so when you feel that shift of, you know, I don't have to take a nap in the middle of the day, though I enjoy them, I don't have to. And so it's like one of these things like, okay, you know, what do you do to keep yourself running? And so, you know, I learned too not to take this, you know, two hours before I go to bed because I'm not going to go to sleep at night. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's just, you know, in the, in the space of being especially aware, you know, and I don't know what I'm being guided to share with you guys right now is something that I, that I actually, I, I wrote on my Facebook and social media, you know, uh, was it this week? Yeah, it was earlier in the week. And, I feel it's very poignant because a lot of times we are always searching for something. We're searching for something in, in the space of stillness and we're searching for something in the space of silence. And I just want to read you this quote and, I, and I'll follow up with the explanation. So the quote says, the silence we see is the harmony within. And the explanation to that is 
we are constantly seeking silence and stillness, whether we are aware of this or not. There is just an illusion. Nothing is ever still or silent. What we are truly seeking is harmony. When there is harmony, all is in vibration of resonance of the heart. Well, heart is the harmony. We step into the new awareness of self, surround these in consciousness. And I think that this is one of the tools because for me, you know, a seer is a tool. Yeah. It's, it's a, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's that other thing to reach for, to get in that space of obtaining and reaching the next level. Yeah, absolutely. It is the tool. And that, that thing about energy too, I was just thinking, you know, Hillis and Angie know who my boyfriend is. They've, they've gotten to know him and, um, he's in his fifties and he works real hard and I could see over, you know, that he's been getting tired or tired, but I will say I've noticed way more energy. I don't know if he's noticed it, but I've noticed it because he's gotten more playful. Like he's gotten more playful with, with life and with me and our dog. And, um, I went with him. He's covered in tattoos, like covered, which funnily enough, people who are covered in tattoos, I've heard, don't know if this is true or not, that you, this is you're usually in the galactics and in the galactics you have your light language on your physical body and so when you get tattooed it's a it, he is covered i don't know pillis if you've ever seen like his all his, his whole he's just covered in tattoos um so no, but i kind of got like my half sleeve of all my <laughs> Stuff. I got two, but yeah, no, that's like, he's like covered, like cut. Wow. Get me a tattoo now. I, I got to get one. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, he's covered. And, um, and we, I was with him. His, one of his best friends is, um, actually, if you guys, I'll set you up out. He's one of the best tattoo artists in the world. He travels around and very famous. If you guys ever want a piece from him, I can set you up with him through, through my boyfriend. But, um, he was getting some work done with, with his friend, um, earlier this week. And I, after I was done, done working, I went over to see him and his friend and watch him get the fill in. And his friend's dog was there, a little puppy, a beautiful little Bonnie, a little puppy. And after he had finished the piece, or my boyfriend was like jumping around playing with the dog, like a 10 year old kid would. And I was like, that's so, and now of course, when you get tattooed, you are, you have a lot of in, adrenaline and stuff. But, um, but I was like, isn't that interesting? Like he, he's, he's so much more playful. It's like he, in his fifties, he's reverted back to being in his twenties. And, um, so yeah. And I think that's definitely the ASEA. Like I said, his hair is, my hair is, listen, I got, I said this with Catherine, I literally got my hair cut two weeks ago and it is already like past the point where it was originally and it's the freaking i see it guys you can read about it my my nails are growing like crazy like my hair has gotten i mean i have thick hair anyway but it's like i don't know it's but that's the that's the health right that's the body at its optimum health um i am a heavy exerciser two hours a day on my mat every day and um i've noticed a huge jump in my endurance in my recovery um, it's unbelievable. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that exercise and spirituality are one and very similar because you're, you're cleaning that out the pathways of the body through the physical fire of sweat to open up new pathways. And so with the bundas, mola bunda, uriana bunda, like there's a different access point to that. And I, I, I say it's the ASEA. The ASEA is not creating something that was, wasn't already there. It's just helping the body get to that point. Um, and so it's it's definitely, and actually in this book, they talk about the, the, the controllers wanting to manipulate everything. And this is definitely, this is definitely a fuck you to the controllers, basically. <laughs> it's like <laughs> giving the people their power back. This is the punk rock. This is the counterculture <laughs> of the mainstream. And Angie, would you be interested? Like, I think it would be super cool because you guys, Angie's just getting her shipment in what, today it's coming in? Yeah, I just checked it on the tracking. I'm, I keep checking it. it says it's in Doraville, Georgia now. Come oh, on. close, honey. You're in Athens. Doraville's, oh, no, Doraville's close to me. It should be there for the next couple of hours. You know, the, you know how these trucks go? You know, I was like, wait, now it went to, it went to, it was from Nashville to Atlanta, then to Dorville, then back to Atlanta, and now Dorville. 
It's not a Sia's fault. It's just no, a, well, Doraville is a suburb of Atlanta, so it's like mm-hmm. literally right in the city. So it's okay. probably just moving back and forth between. It's probably crossing a line, and that's it's perfect. probably right here, just right down the road, and they just haven't done their job and updated. Update. <laughs> I keep well, refreshing. <laughs> I think it would be great, Angie, if you were vulnerable enough to do this on your channel, and I will share it. Um, talk about your experience with your issues, and then graphing tr- tracking yourself as you take the ASEA and I will agree with you Ellis do not take the ASEA right before bed I did that one night and I got into the bed and I looked at my boyfriend I was like damn it I'm gonna have to take a Benadryl because I was like, <laughs> I was like <laughs> so yeah I don't take it I take my last dose around four o'clock in the afternoon that's usually kind of the last I'll take it so um so yeah it's it's um I'm so well Andy do you have any thought but since you just get started before we close out this episode do you have any questions or anything you want to ask since you're brand spanking new to the Asia journey I don't know if I have any questions really I'm just excited I'm excited for it to get here and I'll probably, if it does come in today, then I'll probably start the whole journey tomorrow. I just want like to do it from a full day, you know, um, Saturday. So that'll be Saturday. Um, and yeah, and I will, you know, I'm going to document. I love to vlog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you can also like do like a selfie every day. That's what some people do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do like this because you're not going to notice you know, physical changes because it's so subtle. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's up to you, me, to do like a little like five second video every day, or do like a selfie every day because I mean, it makes a difference. Yeah, it does. I, that's a great idea. I'll do it. I'll I do. Took a, it. I took a picture of my boyfriend's <laughs> hair when he first because he was very skeptical about the hair growing back, um, and Jay was the one that really convinced him just to try, and so. He was like, no, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I've been a raw vegan. I've done all these things. No, it's not going to happen. But what he did was he put the ASEA, so he drinks the ASEA, but he put some of the liquid in a spray bottle and he sprays it. Hmm. And he, I think he got that idea from Dr. Silverman because Dr. Silverman said you can do that to animals, like spray it on their wounds and stuff. Because I tried putting the gel on my dog and he just licked it off. But um, so he sprays his head and then he puts the gel on his hair twice a day. And when he started to notice, and I, and there was like prickly, like little hair starting to grow back on his hairline. So I took a picture, he bent down, I took a picture of the top of his head. And then a month later, we're going to take another picture yeah. and see, so we can see, cause it is, it's, it's not like an overnight, it's a subtle, subtle difference. Um, and so, yeah, it wasn't like, I just recently started to notice that my hair was growing really fast and my nails were growing really fast. I just recently started to notice some of the more, you know, the, um, vanity side of of the skin looking younger and um you know and of course i am doing the face uh and i know uh i've got a couple extra face of the face stuff coming i'm one i'm going to be giving away on the channel so you guys if you missed monday's episode i will put that in the description box below where you can uh, sign up to i will send you a set of the face the skincare i know I'm, angie's going to get one as well and um so you can try it it's the skincare from asia and i'm also going to be giving away one of the um the via the uh, when it comes because it's supposed to be coming today as well and so that i did with Catherine uh, yesterday i'll put that video in the description box below so you know how to sign in for the raffle and i will remind you guys so Catherine and i Catherine edwards and i film every week we film an episode together called coffee chats we do them on thursdays we do every other channel my channel then her channel the next week and what we are going to be doing is every single episode we are going to be doing a giveaway and it's going to be either like one of the gels or a face mask. We Unfortunately, we can't do the liquid giveaway because it's not you really need to like invest in the liquid yourself to use it over a period of time to really feel the full effects. But we are going to be doing some of the, you know, the, the vitamins, all that kind of stuff. Every week we're going to give something away on that channel. So make sure you we, we, we want to share in our in, in this with you guys. So you can start to experience the products for yourself. I will also remind you that, as we said before, ASEA does do a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you want to try the product and after 30 days, you're just not happy with it. You can always get a money back guarantee. Now, um, if you have uh, further questions regarding this product, there is a phone number down in the description box below it's 321-216-8047 you can text that number 
for any either Jay or Hillis or somebody's going to get back to you where you can ask <laughs> any questions that you want regarding this website. I I laugh because that's Jay's phone number. And listen, speaking of the eighties and the nineties, we had to memorize phone numbers, didn't we? In the eighties, <laughs> we knew our home line, we knew our best friend's line, we knew our grandmama's phone number. And at this point, the only numbers I still remember my home line from when I was a kid, and I still remember my best friend's home line from when we were kids. But at this point, at forty, the only phone numbers I know by heart are my mama's phone number. And Jay's. <laughs> so if I'm ever in an emergency situation and I can't get to my contacts, guess what, Jay? If my mama doesn't pick up, I'm calling you. So <laughs> you're the only other number I know by heart besides my mama's. So, so yeah, so you can, that is, that's, and it is, it's not like a hotline number. That is Jay's cell phone number. And he works, Hillis and Jay work together. And so they can, I know a lot of you guys have spoken to Hillis. Um, and so they can help you with any other information that, that that you want regarding and, and research it do the research yourself as Hillis was saying yeah I'm the same way like I'll put the ASEA uh, obviously the website's always in the description box but I will put their YouTube channel and I will put their Genesis video up I cried watching their Genesis video but I have a moon Scorpio my moon's in Scorpio so I cry at a Hallmark commercial so that's not saying much <laughs> if, if I get emotional on my moon's in Scorpio so anyway is there anything you guys want to finish up with today just enjoy your journey, whatever that may be and wherever it takes you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Angie, I'm so excited, girl. I am too. I will say for people that um, that are, are going to do this, you know, they're going to contact Jay and then you eventually talk to Hillis because that's what happened with me. And then, <laughs> I don't know if you remember this, Hillis. I just want people to know your, your energy, you know, how you, you read energies. So um, when we talked, you, you called me Angela. You're not the <laughs> only energy healer who has done that. I said, well, I go by Angie. You said, well, names matter. And uh, yeah, you saw Angela. You felt Angela. That was what I was called when I was I, a child. Going I, back I, to I the do remember 80s. that. <laughs> yeah, you do? Yeah. I do. Because when I saw <laughs> Fickle Pick, I'm like, wait, okay, I know who this is now. <laughs> <laughs> Angela. Well, and I will say yeah. we're in the Athens area where, where Angela lives or up <laughs> in North Georgia area. And that's Angie's now part of this company, guys. She's going to be, she, you can order through her too now. So, um, and I know I told you, Angie, like, cause you can get the, uh, miniature like i have a ton of the miniature renew 28s and i give these away to students here in atlanta all the time like i for them to try it you know because it's a yoga shala we give it to our we have a lot of students who were like ex-football players i got some knee issues and so we give them to get them to experiment with the gel and that's something you can do as well to to help spread the word of of and it's true like if you i know this has said, been said before but i'll say it again if you were in a health food store and you just saw this sitting on the shelf you wouldn't know what it was, would you? Like, you, I would probably just walk right on by it. Like, I would have no idea what this is. But the way that they've decided to do this through word of mouth marketing is that we're able to really talk about it so that you understand and start to have a relationship with, with the product in your own body and how it's working for your own body. And I just want to say one last time, because I get this question all the time, it just popped in my head. No, you cannot overdose with this. No. It not overdose. It cannot hurt you at all. It is literally salt and water. Like there's nothing that can hurt you with this with this product. So it's it's totally safe to try. It doesn't matter what medications you're on. You probably put salt on your food this morning. You are you know it's it's fine. So so it, you don't. It, it's totally safe to try. There's nothing counterintuitive to this product. So um, the where I've heard what is it? Doctor Silman said the worst thing that'll happen is you'll just pee it out. That's yeah. it. That's it. So anyway, guys, well, again, make sure you check out Hillis is also a healer. Yes, you guys. So also go check out Hillis as a healer. <laughs> he's not just as I thought, he's not just the ASEA guy. He's also a, a healer as well. And I know we're going to I'm going to have you back on the channel a lot, Hillis. And obviously, Angie, you're on all the time. So so I would love to I guess we maybe in a month's time we can do another roundtable and see Angie, see how you've been in a month's time, see what's happening. I would love it. I would love it. Yeah. I'll be very honest and, you know, and yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to check it again in a minute. And I just followed Hillis on Facebook. 
<laughs> so I'm your latest follower. Do you know what would be a cool Angela. experiment? I would say it would be a really cool experiment because this also, this works for anything living, anything. So not just humans. Flowers. Flowers. Plants. I found a rose and it's gone now, but I found a rose on the, on the ground outside when I was out walking my dog. It was obviously from a flowered bouquet that fell off and it was like half dead. And I came home and I put in a bowl of a sea and that thing lasted for like two weeks. <laughs> it like brought it back to life. So you can use it for plant life. Anything that's alive needs redox. So, Oh y'all, you know, I'm an orchid whisperer. So I, I don't know if you knew that. So I, I I might have to revive my orchids. I left them outside while I was at the beach and it got cold here in town while I was gone. And I came back and they were very unhappy. So I've been like talking to them and like rubbing For a their little knees. bit. It doesn't take much. <laughs> I give it to my dog every day. Like, cause I'm, cause Robbie's not, Robbie's just, I'm going to make sure he lives forever. We're not even going to talk about the fact no, that this is going to be so much fun for me. I'm going to be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. People yeah. walk ringing my doorbell like, hold on. Shh, shh, shh. Okay. <laughs> Ready to see <laughs> you've been a seed. You've been a seed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you've been a seed. Now you may enter. <laughs> so yeah. Amazing. I love it. So yes, yeah, this is the new a sea is a sea of the new holy water. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna put the Catholic Church out of business <laughs> with the new holy Good. water. So, so yeah, so we have, I know it's, it's this amazing product, you guys. So anyway, if you have any questions about the products, all the information is down in the description box below. Um, this is an incredible company. I've, I've had the pleasure of sitting in on some of the meetings now and it's, it's just incredible people. It's all people that are like us that are, you know, I don't like, like Hillis says, this isn't the great awakening. It's the great remembrance. I don't like saying truth or I like saying seeker. We're seekers. We're all seeking to be on the path of, of light and the path of, of goodness and quality of health. And we want to share that with other people because that's what service to others is about. It's about sharing this benefit of health with every single human that is mm -hmm. here, who, whose soul for some reason agreed to come back. We're, I always say we're like the Hunger Games. We're like, I volunteer as tribute. And then we get down here. We're like, what the fuck are we thinking? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I know I told my boyfriend when we ascend, can we like leave reviews, like Yelp reviews for planet Earth? <laughs> like the French fries were great. But other than that, Venus is better, you know, <laughs> but the people are crazy, you know, but I don't know. But anyway, guys, anyway, any questions you have, again, text the number down in the description box below and you will have somebody will get back to you. Obviously, there's links to the website as well. Hillis has also, oh, and I will put these down in, I will also put this down in the, um, before, sorry guys, before we sign off quickly, I'm gonna also put these links as well down into the description box. I'm just gonna pull it up. My internet's being a little slow here, but there are like shopper packages that Hillis actually- Oh yeah. Yeah, that keep her, and I put some, they've been in, I've been putting them in my videos um, thus far. Okay, it's being, it's being very slow right now. So I guess, I think it's the construction workers next door that gets slow. I will put, it's basically, Hillis created basically packages for you guys. Like, and I will put them down in the description box below. So like, if you don't know what to buy and you want to see like what a good, like you, you put up like a traveler's package, like a start. So I will put those so you can look at those as well. Now, once again, if you still have questions, feel free to text number but if you kind of want to see the different um did it just pull up yes it just pulled up okay here it is guys so he's got hillis came in and he created all these different um different packages on my on my my account so like you've got the uh, the uh, beauty bundle that has all the beauty stuff you've got the magic eight um again my internet's being slow um and then you've got the travelers pack and it shows you whether it's the associate preferred customer or associate so uh the wellness so i'll put all these links down again in the description box below so you can kind of see how hillis just designed it and designed some of these packages that doesn't mean that you have to specifically order these beat these packages you could just simply order some of the liquid it doesn't matter but you can kind of see like how he put these packages together that helps you get a better understanding um of how some of these things work together so all right you guys well thank you guys so much for joining me this morning and i hope you guys are all having a wonderful okay. start to your weekend mercury retrograde is almost over guys so <laughs> so <laughs> we will all talk to you later bye everybody bye have a good one